All right, welcome to the Unit 4 uh, lecture and notes. Make sure you're taking notes on each of these videos. I'm going to do this a little bit different than before. Usually I would put topics together into a video, but I'm going to try and uh, do one video for each topic. So some of the videos are going to be really short, and that hopefully will help it be easier for you to digest. Um, so Unit 4 is Earth Systems and Resources. Uh, we're going to start with the first video which will be plate tectonics after that it'll be soil formation and erosion then soil composition and properties then we'll get into earth's atmosphere we'll talk about the global wind patterns we'll talk about watersheds then we'll do solar radiation and earth's seasons the geography and climate of earth and then finally we'll finish with the last video being about el nino and la nina so this video is going to be on plate tectonics which hopefully should be a review for most of you um, <clears throat> it's uh, something that you've probably learned in the previous in the past all right so to start we look at earth as a dynamic planet we know that geology is how we can study the earth's surface and the interior um, when we talk about the zones of the earth we have the core the mantle and the crust um, the mantle includes the asthenosphere which we'll look at in a second and then the crust is composed of continental and oceanic crust uh, 71% of the of the of all of the crust is oceanic. So this shows you what plate tectonics kind of look like. This is part of that rock cycle as we see two continents colliding. Um, these are actually two uh, two continental crusts moving away from each other, and so we get a rift in the middle that's going to be spreading, creating new material, new soil here. Um, so these two plates are separating. And then you actually can get another boundary right here where these two plates are colliding. And these two plates over here would be colliding. The asthenosphere is going to be this part of the mantle. You can kind of see, though, this is a very slow cycle. So it's nice to see these kind of pictures, but this is something that happens over hundreds of thousands to millions of years. So we know that the Earth's crust is broken into tectonic plates. I say we know that it is the theory of plate tectonics. Um, obviously, we haven't, you know, taken the crust off of the Earth and looked to see um, if there's these plates, but the evidence is there. Um, so the plates actually float on the asthenosphere, and most of the activity that happens geologically happens at the boundaries. So there's three types of plate boundaries you need to be aware of. There's a convergent, divergent, and transform. Uh, convergent is when two plates are colliding. Um, this is where you can get mountains, island arcs, earthquakes, and volcanoes. Divergent is where two plates are moving away from each other. This is where you get seafloor spreading or rift valleys. It can also cause volcanoes and earthquakes. And then transform by, uh, boundaries are where two plates are sliding next to each other, and this can result in earthquakes. So these are the three types to give you a little image to see them all. Um, you know, divergent, they're spreading away from each other. You can get a, you get uh, material coming up through that new area. In convergent, where they're hitting each other, it's subduction, so part of the crust is actually subducting in back into the mantle. Um, you can get trenches. This is typically where vo um, mountains are formed. You can kind of see that there are volcanic arcs that occur. Um, the Ring of Fire, for instance, we'll look at in a second, is something of this. And then Transform is where they are sliding together. And what will happen is these two plates, as they're moving, they might not all move, you know, consistently. It might not be a constant moving of, say, you know, a centimeter per day or something like that. And it might be something where they're trying to move, but they're stuck. And then when they finally get enough pressure and enough stress that they slide and they slip, and that actually causes an earthquake to be formed. Um, that's actually the the um, the San Andreas Fault is a transform, and that's very dangerous for earthquakes because of that pressure that's being built up. So this is just an example of all the different plates. You can actually use pl um, maps like this to determine where volcanoes and island arcs and earthquakes and hot spots and faults are. Um, these kinds of images can be used. These kinds of maps can be used to help uh, design and understand different uh, threats. Obviously there are other fault lines that exist that are outside of this map that you can't see because they are different types of faults. 
Um, the Ring of Fire I was talking about, we look at around the Pacific Plate. We get this nice ring and these island arcs that exist here, along with a lot of volcanoes. Now, like I said before, an earthquake is basically when a boundary builds up too much stress and it causes a slipping action, which releases a huge amount of energy. So you can imagine like you're popping your knuckle. If you slowly put pressure on it, nothing happens, and then eventually there's enough stress where you get a pop. So that's, uh, you know, one way to look at it and think about it. So that brings us to the end of the first video. We'll get to the next video next.